Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to a, uh, a video of sorts of just an informational video as well as an appreciation video as well as an unboxing video. So you're literally going to get uh, three videos out of one here. So if you're interested in seeing uh, more about this Fanatec Club Sport Handbrake version 1.5, then stay around. But for the next minute and a half, I'm going to throw a special couple of shout outs here uh, to a company and also to uh, my donors and subscribers and people that come and have viewed the videos and have donated to this. A couple of weeks ago, we set up a couple of donation bars, had a couple of really nice surprise donation trains and a couple of nice, we had some nice, uh, nice donations came in. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, really just have a very special uh, shout out to all of you guys that have helped make this possible for me. Uh, I do work hard and I do care about the product that I put out on the internet. So um, I, I guess in that way, uh, you guys' uh, appreciation for what I do and, and thankfulness for that, uh, y'all y'all have really come through and donated and, and supported me from this. So thank you. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, a big thumbs up and salutes here from the channel to me, to you, and also thanks to Streamlabs uh, for making this, uh, making all of this stuff really nice to do. It's very easy with Streamlabs. They do uh, they, their software, their internet web-based stuff uh, with donations and their their interactivity tools for chat is just really bar none. It's just the bar so high that I, they're just the go-tos. Uh, so special thanks to them as well. I know I'm a smaller YouTuber. Uh, I don't have all this stuff, but I know uh, I know when to give credit when credit's due, and the credit is definitely due to them. So with all of that and all the nice pleasantries being uh, said, let me show you here what we've got. Uh, we'll start off uh, first off with what we our first donation stuff that we set up was to get us basically clamps. Uh, get us our, our brackets and then get the handbrake. And then we got some other stuff added on that we'll do some more uh, unboxing uh, with here later. So here we go. Here's the main bracket set. I got a lot of this stuff just kind of loosely up here. Uh, but this is extremely, really heavy gauge. And if you can see it on there, it's got this nice, real, real textured kind of feel to it. It's really, really nice. And you've got eighth inch, uh, looks, to be, it looks to be about eighth inch uh, channel uh you know metal here uh channel gauge eighth inch gauge i'd say uh and it's really 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 nice it, it's, it's not going anywhere once all the bolts and stuff are done on this it is not literally not going anywhere you probably will take the front part of your table off before you break anything on this extremely so if you do have the metal uh sim racing uh, rigs type stuff uh this is going to fit up nice to it especially if you're kind of you know curious about that so the the that bracket stuff, we'll get into a little bit more of that. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna pop the cover back onto this because I, I did have it off, kind of looking, making sure I had everything uh, that I wanted to talk about there. So here is uh, the the big handbrake. So this is this is the big daddy here. So uh, nice, 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 good polish. Now I'm not sure. I guess this would neither this possibly could be aluminum, but it could be also steel. I mean I don't know. It's uh, maybe maybe polished. Uh, I don't know. It's solid metal, and it's uh, ridiculously strong. It is not going anywhere. I don't ever see either. I don't see a lot of sway back and forth in this as well. So if you're worried about this thing moving back and forth or grinding up against the side, uh, you've got plenty of room and space in here that you're going to have free travel and movement here uh, as well. Nice, good padded, uh, almost ridiculously padded uh, you know, spring shift up here. I mean, it just, just feels good. So I can't wait to actually get this plugged up on the computer and get stuff really moving on. It's going to be exciting. So let's take a peek here on the guts of this, and then we'll look at the brackets and how all this stuff goes together, what kind of tools you're going to need to kind of uh, maximize setting and hooking all this stuff up. Let me turn down the light just a little bit here so you guys will see. <clears throat> the insides here. So basically all you've got is one master return cylinder here, and it's kind of hooked up to what looks to be like one of those old... Uh, kind of lift gate shocks, you know, you used to keep your lift gates up like on old Jeeps and Explorers and all that, you know, SUVs and stuff. Uh, it kind of looks like you've got a half of one of those here. Uh, and then on the back side, you've got this down here. So this is your main return spring. And then you've got a bump stop down here. That's a nice good plastic. It's already, I mean, rubber. It's already been oiled. Uh, so you got your washer and a set screw down here. And you, now we'll talk about this set screw here in a few minutes. But you can see as I try to pull it back, you'll see how that drops down spring compresses pulls that off and the bump stops up so what you don't want is this down here sticking so that's why it's already been oiled uh everything's already been taken care of and all it's already ready to go so that's cool um i'll just leave the cover off for right now now the cool thing is this thing offers you a couple different ways uh that you can you can mount this up now first off before we get too deep into the mounting stuff let's look at what comes in the box here with the uh with the with the main brake here you get all of these i feel like it came with a ton of stuff so you got if you don't have any kind of the uh, the club sport, uh, if you don't have any of the wheels, the elite wheels, you don't have any of that stuff from Fanatec, no pedals, no wheels, no no nothing. Uh, here's what you've got uh, to to basically 
get you around all that. Got a nice cool adapter straight from Fanatec. Now they use um, these like serial, which looks like the old telephone jacks. So they've got those in there. Those will plug into here and then this unit will plug in USB to uh, the computer. So very easy. If you've got more, and let's say you've got some more of this stuff, you can actually double these up. So if you've got the shifter uh, that plugs into the wheel, uh, you might be able to plug both of these in. I do not have these, so I can't speak from personal experience, but if somebody does have personal experience with Fanatec stuff, you wanna throw a comment on here and say, yeah, that basically fits in everything. So you can have all of this stuff goes into one. Then leave me a comment and I'll make sure to pin it and say, yeah, hey, I've got the Fanatec stuff, the wheel, and I've got the CSL, whatever. I've got it, you know, Elite. And yeah, it all fits together in one package. Well, let me know. I'll pin that up on the channel. That way, if anybody's looking and comes across this video and they have that same question, then you'll be the answer. So basically, it's even labeled. It even says pedal on one side. It says handbrake on the other. Uh, and this would obviously fit inside the handbrake side. Now, this is like a headphone jack, kind of like a 3.5. It's got the tip ring and the sleeve. Uh, almost kind of looks like a stereo one because we have three connections going into this because uh, this is an axis control so you'll probably have uh, I mean, essentially what would be you know your directions and then one extra down there I don't know if that's for power signal exactly what USB signal that's carrying but that's essentially what it'll look like there so it plugs into the side and then this would plug into your wheel if you've got the CSL stuff if you don't have any of the Fanatec wheels uh, then this will go inside of your adapter and then the USB will go inside the computer. Now, uh, aside from that, they've also gave you one other additional item, which is if you've got the boards that control all of your gauges. If you've got, uh, I think simprojects. I don't know if it's .com or exactly what a sim hardware. I have simprojects something something, and it's a lot of racing stuff. So they got gauges, everything from turbo boost to fuel gauges to RPM, all different kinds of styles. They've got oil pressures, fuel pressure, they got all kinds of crazy stuff over there. And all those have wiring that you can solder up and all hook it together. So aside from that, uh, this thing has a small thing that will plug inside of one of the extra little boards there. So if you're looking at it, it's got this little small little white thing. It's got four pins down. It's actually only got three wires, but it's got four pins and that will plug into one of those. Now I don't have any experience with that, so don't take any of what I'm saying there is the gospel because I really honestly don't know um, because I don't have SIM project. But I'm just saying, that's got to be what that is. Um, I don't really know any other way to do it. So if you're putting all that stuff together, it's a way to be able to use because the way those boards work and interact with one another is you can put a lot of stuff into that board and then have one USB come out and run everything from handbrakes to gauges to everything because everything's got a place. Everything's got a... It's ridiculous. I, I, I'm so enthralled with that stuff. I just don't have the time to mess with it like I, like I want to. Um, so anyway, okay, let's let's look at this. Let's look at how this all brackets together. I'll show you a couple different mounting options with the Fanatec stuff. I'll show you exactly, you know, kind of what I'm thinking I'm going to be setting up, and then we'll go over the sim. We'll try some stuff out. We'll actually demo it out, and then we'll come back and do a small little just a recap on what we did, uh, as well as just my final thoughts on what maybe or some cons. Because I mean, I think if you're going to do a fair review, you need to have a a con. You know, not any product is perfect, um, but. You know, at the end of it, there are some products that are just better than others, you know, and that's why you pay money for them. Uh, if you've got the money to invest in this, you're going to be playing the racing games, you enjoy the rally games, uh, then this this may be the thing for you. And if this video helps you out there, well, don't forget to throw a like up on it. You know what everybody else does. You guys know what to do. Go ahead and throw a subscription as well because I've got more stuff to unbox. I've got more things from the donors. If you want to catch us too in a live stream, don't forget to subscribe, and then that way you can catch us here in the, in the next and latest one. So here we go. So this is what everything looks like when it's all set up. Uh, now, I'm not going to put the backings on this just because, you know, I'm going to wind up moving it all over there So and then adjusting it from there. So this is what it's going to look like hanging off the front of my, my desk. Now, what I'm planning on doing is having the shifter up here and then the handbrake right here. So we'll have... You know, if you're looking at me driving, I'll be driving right here, then I'll have the shifter here, and then I'll have the handbrake will be set right up underneath it. That way I can grab, shift, and I can handbrake here. And you can also raise this up. So you just got about a two and a half, maybe a two and a half inch travel, uh, if best, um, which is actually kind of nice. So once this is all fastened up here, you've got these four screws that, that hold everything in. Those are eight millimeters. So the two things you're going to need is an eight millimeter just like that, and then you'll need a 10 millimeter. Now the 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter uh, socket here is a deep set socket and also have a, uh, an eight inch extension. Now you don't have to have the extension, 
but I'm only going to have it because I'm going to be reaching up under here to turn my set screw. Now this set screw, I have to say, be careful with this and when you undo those, it actually reduces the amount of tension on the spring for the return. So this thing pulls down like this. But when I first got this thing, I could barely budget. And when I put it on the table and pulled it down, I felt like I pulled the table away from the wall. I don't have a, uh, I have a very mobile desk. It's not like anchored into the wall. And I mean, it's not, you know, ridiculous. It's, it's just a simple four legged desk, which I am going to be upgrading. I'll be building my own one. So, uh, but anyway, <clears throat> so this is how that works. Now the set screw, like I said, will uh, do a half turn or like a quarter turn. I would not go too far. Don't sit there and just start cranking that thing out and say, oh yeah, yeah, it's really nice and loose. And then all of a sudden this spring goes bing, and then it pops out of this. If it does and shoots these spring stuff out, you're going to have to figure out a way to clamp this spring together so that you can actually get the bolt back up through the bottom and get it back into here. So uh, like I said, when you're doing this, make sure when you loosen it, what you're doing is taking this tension off of the spring. You're extending this part right here. You're extending it this way which is going to take the spring and tension off of this so that when you pull it down, it's actually, you know, feels like you can actually move it. Before, I couldn't touch it at all. So if you do get it, here's my suggestion. Um, when you loosen this up, if you loosen it up a quarter and you get one more quarter and you're like, okay, that's perfect. When you feel like it's perfect, go just tighten it up just ever so slightly. Um, because you, if you're on the verge of being close to being, you know, off that spring, you want to give it that extra little round of wedge there to, um, Tighten it back up just ever so slightly. Uh, but obviously this will all have these covers on it. So you're gonna have to pop the cover off uh, to adjust that set because you cannot get to it from here. So pop the cover off. There's just a couple of Allen screws uh, like so. So after you get the Allen screws, I'll I have to go look and see, but I just got a, um, I've just got a metric set uh, of, uh, of Allen keys, like uh, one of those, uh, you know, one of those packs where they rotate off the, the thing. So that's what I got, and it's got my multiples of these different sizes, and that's what I use for that, and it just pops them straight off of that. Uh, other than that, you really should not have to mess with any of these. Now, now here's the cool thing. Let me go ahead and take this back off, or at least take these bolts back out. So aside from doing it like that, let's say, uh, so we normally have it like this. Let's say you want to do it like this. So let's put this one up like so, and let's pretend, for at least argument's sake here this video, that your table shift clamp stays like this. Now in this setup, you can have two things. Um, I believe at some point, I believe, do not quote me, I need to get the shifter because shifter will be here in a couple uh, of weeks after we get our last Super Chat money from uh, our accounts there from Google. So once that comes in, we'll purchase the shifter. But now the shifter can sit up on top here if you want to, or the shifter can fit on the front here. Now if it fits on the front here, you've got another option for mounting. You can actually mount this to the side of the shifter and it will offset hang off of this. You won't even have the bottom shifters here. I mean the bottom right here, you won't even have them. So if you do put that on the front here, then this, like I said, will butt up on the side of it like this and then your bolts will go into the side and screw into the side of the shifter. And that way everything will be here. Um, and it'll be all in kind of almost encased in one thing. I still don't think I'm gonna do that. I still think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do mine the other way. I'm probably gonna rotate these. Uh, basically, I'm gonna flip them in this way. So these should be almost opposite, if that makes sense. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Anyway, the shifter will set in the middle of this, and then this will set uh, at the very bottom of it like this. So we'll have, the shifter will be uh, slightly higher, uh, and then the, the, the handbrake will be all the way inside at the bottom. Now, here's the other thing. If you wanted to keep this here, and you wanna take these brackets, pretend to move these brackets up to here. If you move these brackets, the brackets on top would look something like this. So don't take this literal, I'm just showing a, you know, a, another figure here of how this could be done. So you could mount it up in a console that maybe you have sitting beside. Maybe you've got a wood box or a carpeted box that you have beside you that's got a shifter in it or got something in there that you're using for a sim rig. You could use this like the old school, like the track drift style cars, like any of those 350Zs or anything that has an actual uh, e-brake that's right beside the seat, like a lot of those older sedans and a lot of those older uh, cars do that they typically run for a lot of those drift stuff. Um, that's where your e-brake would be. It wouldn't be up here like a rally style. Uh, it would be on the floor or at least beside in the console. You could do it there or if you wanted to have it more on the floor or at least inset near a console, but you didn't want it to pull it up like a, like a Honda, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking of, like a Honda or one of those Nissans. You can actually flip this bar around. So this bar has two different mountable options here. You can see uh, in there, you've got a couple of bolts that go through this thing. Now they're set with an Allen key on one side 
and then they've got like one of those uh, 10 millimeters on the other side. So you'll need you an adjustable wrench. Uh, pop that adjustable wrench, put it on there, undo that, pop those things off. Now what you'll do is you'll take this off. So it'll basically come across or come uh, across of it like this, and then you'll flip this thing around. So if you're looking at it like this, what'll happen is once you flip this thing around, it'll flip and then do like this. So your brake will basically be standing straight up and it'll have the, the curve will be like this. So it'll come off, it'll curve and then go straight up and your handle will be like up here instead of down here. So you could put this inset on some type of carpeted box or something like that and then have that up here. So if you've got uh, your gear shifter stuff down here on the bottom, which I'm kind of thinking that, and eventually I probably will do some type of a carpeted box with a weight in the bottom. Uh, like a you know 25 pounder to keep it on the floor and keep it stable. If I do something like that, then I could put this on there. Uh, then I could put the shifter on there. I could do all of that stuff and then have it all. It's kind of a one set turnkey kind of box that has a USB cable that comes out of it and hooks it all together. So um, yeah, there's a couple of different options. Like I said, I mean, you, there's just options to do this. So these brackets are not just one trick ponies. There's lots of different setups that may uh, work for you. So that's kind of what this video was about. I'll show you some different ways uh, to be able to hook all of this stuff up, be able to you know, just, just really kind of uh, take a one uh, a one turn key kind of look at everything you can do all the different setups because I've never really found a video that has all that you can do so I'll tell you what let's do this let's go ahead and let's get this clamped up on the desk and we'll get all my little allen keys back in we're going to get this thing set up we'll get it somewhat adjusted uh, enough to where we can actually kind of formally look at this uh, as, as video let's start up project cars I'll put this thing up there let's kind of, kind of look and see what we've got we'll see what it looks like there uh, on the on the sim, we'll pull some project cars up in the rally. We'll look at one of the tracks. We'll actually use this thing. We'll we'll go ahead and walk through putting it through USB, plugging it in, uh, and then actually seeing what it looks like and registers inside of project cars, and then setting up our handbrake, and then going from there. So after that, we'll go ahead and do a little recap again, uh, just kind of all the things you can do, uh, and just uh, another thanks again to all the donors and subs and everybody that makes this kind of stuff possible. I'm super excited. So let's go do it. I'm gonna we'll head back here. I'll take you with me. Uh, and I'll see you back here and I'll uh, transition for you, but it'll be a few minutes for me and get it all set up and then we'll be rocking and rolling on the track. So we'll see you here in a minute. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Sim Pit. Hope you guys uh, have enjoyed the video so far. So as I drive around here, we pre-recorded this so I could come in and do a voiceover so that I would not uh, completely lose focus as I'm riding around here because I'm literally in the zone when I did this because I knew I was like, it's got to look halfway legit and, and real for you guys to be like, yeah, okay, he's not a bad racer. He's okay. I could probably do better, but it's all right. Handbrake looks good, don't it? <laughs> so anyway, let's look at some pros and cons here. Finish up this review, get you guys out of here, and on to the next video. First, here is the first pro. It's rigidity and construction. Absolutely amazing. All metal body. Uh, absolutely the best thing that I've had in my hands here on the top of this table besides my monitors and my fly sim stuff. Absolutely fantastic. All metal casings, all metal bodies, all metal parts on the insides as well. All the brackets were all metal. Most of it's all galvanized, which is great. So any moisture is going to resist some rust. Pro 2 is going to be access control. I love the fact that this is an axis and not necessarily a button. Now, not all games allow you to assign handbrake to an axis, but most of the ones that do feature this type of drift, rally cross, rally driving, most of all of them do allow you the access control, which brings me up to this third pro, which is the controllability. Uh, having the controllability inside in your hands while you're racing is absolutely uh, amazing. I've been using a button for a while, and I'm like, you know what, man, I'm just going to make this happen. I'm going to go grab this. Let's put some donation bars. Let's see what the subscribers, let's see what the donations, let's see what guys want to do. Let's see how they come through. And it's been absolutely amazing seeing all this. So now that I've actually got something like this in my hands, uh, it's absolutely amazing. The control uh, is well, I guess you'd almost uh, second that up with your control. And also the first pro is the rigidity and construction. Having all three of those play together is absolutely amazing. So that brings me to the first set, just really the two cons that I could find of this. One is going to be is going to be the price. A lot of people are going to say one hundred and eighty dollars is just too steep for me. I get it, I understand, but the way I think about it in PC gaming, you get what you pay for. And anything fan attack, uh, you are going to get a lot of what you're paying for. This stuff is great. Now I am a believer. So that's your first con that some people are going to say. That's the only one I can really find. The second one is is really the, the rigidity and construction. Almost can be a pro and a con. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because if you have a, a very light duty desk, you're going to find the handbrake is probably very strong for that desk. So you're going to make sure 
that you're mindfully conscious. Does that mean it should affect you buying it? No. It just means that you need to be mindfully conscious um, as you're, you know, as you're racing around the track, not to get too excited and just yank it off the desk. Because right? I, I, I feel in a, in, a, in a fit of like surprise, you can do it. If you've got a sim pit, you've got the full entire deal, uh, then I say go for it, man. You're going to be able to bolt that thing up to aluminum frames and you're going to have no problem at all in yanking the thing as hard as you want to and it's not going anywhere. If anything, it's going to yank you through the kitchen door. Uh, so aside from that, that's the only two small cons and I still think those are relatively small. So in closing, I really give this a 9 out of 10. I think overall this thing deserves a 9 out of 10. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic just to be able, as you see me pulling around here, I'm just, I'm pulling this thing, just giving just that break and getting that back in broke around uh, and then I'm, boom, I'm out of the turn and trajectory. The car's going the right way and it's awesome. So thanks again. I hope that this video has served you well. Uh, I'll be able to bring more of these videos back as well. So go ahead and leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And guys, as we cross the finish line, we'll see you here in the next video.